r slash ask reddit police officers of reddit what are some laws that you feel uncomfortable enforcing because you disagree with them not exactly a law but it's the closest thing i have that's semi relevant i did a spell as deputy and had to work in the city jail when working the jail i would be put in charge of the holding cells where you would go while you wait to see a magistrate judge to get your bail set you could be in these cells for up to 72 hours in same cases anyway the rules for this particular part of the jail were that you could not shower for 72 hours and you got one meal every 8 hours while you were there. Meals were served at 6am, noon and 6pm. If you shower up at 6.30 you were not getting fed until 6am for example. The food they would serve was always the same. Bologna sandwich, white bread, American cheese, one apple and one bag of pretzels. Nothing fancy or delicious but it would keep you going until you were released or sent up to the normal jail cells. Anyway, I'd always order a dozen or so extra lunches to have on hand for anyone who showed up late or for the homeless who were arrested. I made sure they could shower much sooner than 72 hours and I would help anyone who needed it get in touch with a bondsman to get them out of jail. The way I saw it, I was saving taxpayer money getting them out of jail and they already had the food that would have just led to wasting the taxpayer money. Plus no one wants to go to court reeking of booze. Open liquor laws. You wanna have a beer while you float down the river? Have at her. Gonna throw that beer bottle over the side into the stream? Damn right I'm gonna write you up for littering. And then the open liquor ticket is a duck you for being a selfish ass. Edit. As was pointed out I should clarify. Floating downstream on an inflatable tube. Not drinking while operating a boat. That still gets you charges. Before I was a police officer, I was put in a sort of catch-all position. Police service officer. Duties included evidence custodian. Animal control. Court bailiff. Code enforcement. And part-time police work. This was 2012 to 2013. Kansas had a rather wet season. For about a month and a half straight we had rain almost every day. No one had a chance to mow their grass. City managers saw it as a grand opportunity for me to start writing people tickets for their grass being too high. I told him I didn't feel comfortable doing that. When asked why, I told him I didn't think it was right for me to write people tickets for tall grass when there are city owned properties all over the city that had grass just as tall. We went back and forth. He got my captain involved and threw a fit. Before he stomped out of captain's office he made the comment this is my city. You work for me and what I say is law. Captain agreed he was an a-hole but ultimately said I should just write the tickets. So I went back to the evidence locker. What everyone called my office because I was the only one who had access. And did some research. An hour later. I walked over to the city manager's office. Which happened to be right across the street. And handed the city manager about 14 tickets. He asked what those were. I told him I was doing exactly what he told me to do. I was writing tickets for grass being too tall. The first 14 tickets were for the 14 city owned properties that had grass over 12 inches high. He said those weren't his responsibility. I calmly reminded him of his previous comment about him owning the city. And he called the chief. He insisted I be fired for insubordination. A month later, I was promoted to full time patrol officer. Cops in my town carry nickels and feed the meters instead of taking the time to write tickets. I was working security for a low income housing facility. The people that ran this facility had a little scam they did where they would turn off the fobs of tenants so tenants couldn't open the front door. It was $35 to get the fob turned back on. There were 400 tenants at this complex. At any one time a quarter of the fobs might be turned off. I was working the front desk and if a tenant had a turned off fob I wasn't supposed to let them. I would let them in anyway. I got fired. Holy shit that's awful. Good on you though. Most town city ordinances. Things like not being able to park on the street in front of your house between certain hours of the night. Foo who up that. You want me to ticket some dad's car because he moved it out of the driveway so his 5 year old son could bike around the driveway? Yeah, shit's not happening. Also, certain traffic violations in the middle of the night. You forgot to signal your merge when you're the only vehicle on a two lane road at 3am. God help us all. Recently expired DLs and plates. A neighboring city wrote a car whose plates expired 11 minutes prior. Bewildered Jacksonville Jaguars fan GIF. 
He said the person should have known it was about to expire and taken care of it ahead of time. Oh duck right off. We have all had life interfer with things. There's a huge difference between letter of the law and spirit of the law. I would say I'm probably just a terrible cop. But my coffee mug says I'm the world's best policeman. So it's definitely not that. A buddy of mine used to be a cop and said he never got anyone for weed because it's too much hassle and it'll be legal soon anyway. My best bud, known him 20 years and his entire family are cops. Dad, mom, sister, and two brothers. All cops. Anyways, I have dinner with them from time to time and I recall one time his brother discussing having to go monitor a protest. With all the other cops in their riot gear, I was fascinated that every person, cops, at the table had the same reaction of hating protests, for different reasons. One person said it was boring and you have to stand all day. One person said it sucks when the people you're protecting start yelling at you. His mom, who was a dispatcher, said it diminishes responsibility because all the cops were tied up at the protests and that means less patrols elsewhere, etc. Bottom line is found out cops hate protests. I haven't been a cop for a while, but I had a very brief stint as a deputy sheriff a handful of years ago. I struggled a lot with situations in which addicts were criminalized. There was one man who I remember who had been out on parole but got caught with drugs in his system. Because of the failed drug test he was getting sent back to jail. And unfortunately, I was the one who had to take him there. It crushed me. It was an older dude who clearly didn't mean to cause trouble and clearly didn't want to be in this situation. He needed treatment, not jail time. We also had a lot of people come through who were using synthetic drugs, like bath salts when nobody knew what they were and Bath and Body Works took their bath salts off the shelves. It was frightening to see some of our frequent flyers come back to us more and more incoherent because of these drugs and the permanent damage they were causing. But the truly heartbreaking moment was when I was transporting a young black man who was in for marijuana possession and he said, the next time I'm just using that synthetic shit. Your tests can't see that in my system. I went full on mama bear and told him, basically begged him, not to mess with that stuff and relayed some of the things that I had seen. I have no way of knowing if he ever listened to me, but I really, really hope he did. Ultimately, my experience in this job changed my intended career path. I had been planning on staying in law enforcement for a chunk of time and then going to law school. I even had judges ready to write recommendation letters and a solid LSAT practice test score. But to see so many stupid and morally debased laws being upheld simply because that was the precedent didn't sit well with me. So I left that job and became a documentary filmmaker instead. Much less lucrative. But a more immediate way to work for justice. I had a run in with the cops a few years ago where they could have easily taken me for at the very least public intoxication. But they cut me a break and gave me a ride home instead. Made me feel like they didn't want to take some drunk idiot to jail when he was just trying to get home and sleep. Here's a copy paste of the full story if anyone is interested. I had taken a cab back from a work party and I was pretty drunk. My friend and I had just moved to this new apartment so I accidentally gave the cab driver the wrong address. I ended up on a block that looked very similar to mine and a building that looked like mine. There were two doors before getting to my apartment door, which was on the first floor. Like my apartment building they left the first door unlocked and locked the second door. I kept trying my keys to open it but I couldn't and was confused. I went outside to look for my car and it wasn't parked there. That's when I realized I was on the wrong block. I started walking in the direction I thought my apartment was when a cop car pulls up. They ask me what I'm doing and I tell them. I'm really drunk and I just want to go home which was the honest truth. They told me they got a call about someone trying to get into an apartment building. I guess the people in that apartment building woke up and thought I was trying to break in. They were super suspicious of me at first. But eventually it became clear I was just some drunk idiot and not a burglar. They ran me through to make sure I didn't have warrants or anything and when I checked out they offered me a ride home. The ride back was hilarious because when we were getting to my apartment I tried telling them that it was a bit complicated to get to because of all the one way streets. The officer driving was like, who do you think you're with? And then turned on the lights and went the wrong way down the street to get me home faster. It honestly felt like I was with the two cops from Superbird. Was an Air Force cop. 
hated taking cell phones from people from the flight line. It was an arrest offense and could lose ranks and stuff. Every. Single. Cop. Has their phone on them on the flight line. I guarantee it. Riding bikes on pavements. If there's pedestrians on it then yes. Use the road. But if it's completely empty. Why not use it? It's a lot safer than riding on the road. I have never arrested anyone for weed nor would I unless forced to. I have never been faced with it but as long as it isn't in everyone's face I would never charge for prostitution. In Canada, when an alcoholic is placed on conditions not to consume alcohol, it feels like a real dong move to charge them with breach and conditions if the only offense they're committing is the consumption breach. On the other hand it makes for a great additional charge you can slab on a-holes who are, ek, beating their wives while drunk. I'm not a cop but my dad is. We recently had a whole discussion about mandatory arrest laws, where if two people get into an argument where someone is hurt, and have a prior relationship, cousins, ex-boyfriend girlfriend, the officer has to arrest someone. This stemmed from a long history of men beating their wives, the wives calling the police, and the men saying that everything is cool, and smoothing it over with the police. These laws work great in domestic abuse situations, because cops would tend to side with the man. But not great in other situations. Where my dad disagrees is in these other situations. Say you and your boys are out downtown for a night of drinking and games. When you beat one of your friends in a game of darts, your friend gets upset that you beat him. And starts yelling. You yell back. Of course. And your friend hits you. The bartender calls the cops. And gets you bread and water. And you and your friend sober up. By the time the cops get there, your friend and you have kissed and made up, and everything is good between you. However, because the two of you are friends, the police must arrest someone by law. With these laws, a little argument over darts turns into a night in jail and a criminal record. IT gets worse, because your friend and you have a prior relationship. This misdemeanor turns into felony aggravated assault, and you're now a convicted felon. Lots of college age boys have had their lives ruined by these laws, and for this reason, my dad disagrees. Obligatory not a cop, 911 Kautika, any kind of petty non-emergency call where someone isn't directly bothering anyone are the most obnoxious calls to have to put in for us. If you call in to report teenagers skating, people smoking weed, or a party going on at 3pm on a Wednesday, there's almost a 90% chance at least one person is insulting you for it. If it's not us, it's the dispatchers or the police themselves. In the grand reddit tradition of not quite answering the question right, I dated a girl whose father was a cop. He'd always tell us where the a-hole cops were patrolling on any given night we were going out. Hey, stay the duck out of whitefish tonight guys. Good dude. Psycho daughter. But a good dude. Hope he's well. I'm not a cop but one of my friends was a military police officer and a majority of his domestic disputes were because of the wives but he was always forced to remove the male spouse or the service member spouse in the instance of same sex couples. Or remove the higher ranked spouse if both were in service. The case that really made him want to quit being an MP was our mutual friend had a domestic disturbance called to his house and his wife who everyone who had ever met her knew she was a straight up B and hated everyone. Well she had started arguing with her husband and that led to her throwing stuff, anything in arms reach at her husband. He started to record this and he was still charged with domestic violence even though he never hit her or anything and he had to spend 24 hours locked up in the locked ward in the hospital because he needed almost 30 stitches total and had a pretty bad concussion. Both friends have since left the military, the one with the DV charge has been divorced from his ex. He also got the charges thrown out because of video footage. My friend the MP is now a social worker for domestic violence survivors. He assists in how to obtain protective orders, emergency housing, and even name changes. Back in the day when I was the popo in the state prisons, I was expected to write up people that had fresh tattoos. That's the stupidest thing ever. I just pulled them to the side and told them not to let me see it again and made them mop the day room. In Canada you are allowed to pepper spray a minor for spitting in a public place. Edit. There is a bit of backstory. But that was the gist of the story. If you want the full version. I was living at college residence in small town X. Canada. I wasn't doing very well. 
I was the youngest person there. I was drinking a lot and smoking pot. Still illegal back then. Right before this story I gave myself a massive concussion. I got depressed and tried to kill myself. They put me in a psychiatric unit. And I signed myself out after 3 days. Unfortunately it was winter. I didn't have a coat. Or wallet. So I had to hike across small town X back to campus. The person in charge of residence didn't want me there. So she called the cops to detain me. She was trying to find my psychiatrist too. Needless to say I was all sorts of ducked up by this point. I was belligerent and spit on the ground. Small town ex cop decides this is a form of assault or something and it's time to arrest me. I refuse. He forcibly tries to put handcuffs on me. With his partner jumping on me as well as big fat dean of students. They hit my leg with a nightstick. Still have hairline fracture. And pepper sprayed me. Dut. So yes. First hand experience that Canadian cops pepper sprayed a minor for spitting. A traumatized. Suicidal. Mentally unhinged me. An equally good question. I hope. What petty laws have you enforced just because a person wasn't listening to reason? Possession of cannabis for personal use. Such a waste of time and money to prosecute and not in the public interest in the slightest. UK cop BTW. Whaling is illegal in Oklahoma. I won't write a ticket if they kill a whale. Bro, you made it to the end. You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more light. It's free and that's a great price.